Two channel listening fans, warm welcome back for this fine Saturday, March 13th. It is that time again for another audio component review with your third favorite host, me, Jason. And as promised, we are going to do the third and final installment of the Ascend Acoustics Sierra line, the Sierra 2EX. So a few episodes ago, we covered off on the wonderful entry-level Sierra 1, the mid-level Sierra 2, and the latest and greatest revision from Dave Fabricants is the 2EX. The speaker itself, the dimensions, everything's a carryover. You still have the wonderfully very tight, inert, bamboo, multi-layered cabinet, still with all the driver components Combined, you have a 20-pound uh, bookshelf speaker. The Rawl Tweeter is the carryover from the Sierra 2. It's basically that 60 millimeter by 10 millimeter uh, wonderful Rawl Tweeter, another proprietary blended tweeter, something that you couldn't get off the shelf at uh, Madison Sound or Dayton Audio. What makes this the EX version of a 2? When it comes down to it, Dave really wanted to kick kick it up a notch. When they went from the Sierra 1 to the Sierra 2, they lost some of that deeper bass magic with having to redesign the crossover to really pair well with the faster, lighter raw tweeter. And by having a faster and lighter mid-band woofer, it gave up a little bit of the of the the lower end and it cut off the hertz a little bit higher so that two the sierra two that cut off at 41 hertz and was an 87 db six ohm speaker after after about a, another year and a half of development per per their website dave went back to Ciaz and said look I need a, another driver from you guys, something that's really going to kick this up a notch and something that will help dig down deeper and pull out more of those low-end registers. So Ciaz brought in the XL Curve Woofer. This is one of their new one of their newer designs and it's basically you take this five and a quarter inch woofer and it has a deeper cup with inside of it so that you are getting a surface area that is mimics an actual true six inch uh, midwoofer and it is a poly woven fiber design now the the other one the other cs that's in the two is the same poly fiber but when i show you the comparisons of the two the two cones you can clearly see that this is a much tighter woven speaker there's a lot more refinement to the the how it's woven and there's just there's more smoothness in the design of this particular cup. Then the other thing that stands out this has this has the fixed pole with this really beautiful copper plug that looks like a nice little bullet. So with that cutting through the center, that also uh, frees up some of the mass of the cone itself making it ever so slightly lighter and then of course with its free air resonance it's going to give it just a little bit more speed. The numbers are really impressive for a speaker of this size. Now this is the specifications of this speaker. This is now digging down to an in-room 33 Hertz with the same RAL cutoff up to 27K. This is an 86 dB at one watt efficiency, so it does drop one level, one dB level versus the Sierra 2, but it picks it up in the nominal ohm operating range, whereas the, the Sierra 2 was a six ohm nominal range. They managed to, with the crossover, work it out to where this is back to being an 8 ohm nominal speaker. So needing a lot of power is just not required and I can prove that with the different integrates that I tested this speaker with. 
The crossover itself, again, when you have a raw tweeter, the ribbon tweeters, they like to be crossed over much higher. They cannot go as low as traditional textile dome tweeters. So you're, you're crossed over around that three and a half K range. During my break-in time with the speakers, it played lots of test tones, and I did some, some really low-level sweeps. I was able to get, again, the video for you guys on that. I pulled off a, a 20 hertz to 200 hertz sweeper, and then some warble tones to where it really works that woofer out. And you guys could see this thing in full action. Lots of extension is available with, within this woofer. And then I also did my own trying to nail down, okay, where where's the in-room frequency response? How low can I get with the 2EX? So hearkening back to the SEER 1s, in-room response was at about 38 to 39 hertz. With the 2s, I was getting 39 to 40 hertz in-room response where the bass still had some tonality to it. With these, with this woofer, I had a clean 35 hertz. Now, I... It says it goes down to 33K. I was struggling to hear the 32, 33 in my room. I would be more conservative and say that the 35 Hertz was what I'm comfortable attributing to what the bass response was in my room and, and hearing a clean tone. During my playback with the Sierra 2 EX, I've had three integrated amplifiers on hand and across three weeks, I plugged in all three different integrated amplifiers, each integrated having a full week of play with the Sierra 2 EX. Well, I've got this, this name that I've been breaking in for the last two weeks. I have the name 5, at 5SI. This is a 60 watt integrated amplifier. I have the Peachtree Deco 125 Sky that I reviewed a few weeks ago. That is a Class D. 120 watt amplifier and then my long-term standby that I've had since I've started this channel is my wonderful Unison Research Unico P. It's a stage 2 modified 50 watt hybrid integrated amplifier where it has the two preamp stage and the MOSFET power stage. So that is the, the from a power perspective on the lowest end working with this speaker no problems whatsoever. When you've got the 50 watts of that integrated and the 60 watts of this name, no worries with that 86 dB at one watt efficiency. I played back most of my music to where it's going to be critical within the 78 to, to 85 dB range. Again, my clips every Every now and then there'd be a song that would get a little bit away from me and something might hit up to 87 dB, but I'm pretty careful about, you know, keeping a level playing field of, of how I review the speakers and how I review the amplifiers. So, all things being equal, having spent the time with the Sierra 1s, having spent the time with the Sierra 2s, and then three weeks with these two EXs, Lots of music can be listened to at roughly 30 hours a week of, of playback for these speakers. 30 hours per week playback for these speakers. I dipped in all over the place. And this is how I can basically recap what the sound is, what the sound signature is for these two EX. I would like to state that with the three different integrated amplifiers, they have three different topologies from each other. And with that, that gives me a very good cross-reference of what influence those different topologies would have on these speakers. Now, the three different integrateds across the board have less influence or there was not as much of a difference plugging those in with these speakers versus listening to the differences from a Sierra 1 to a Sierra 2 
2 is Sierra 2EX. The difference in the tonality of those three across the board was more, there was greater change than with the different integrated amplifiers that I have on hand. So, having said that, it goes this way. If I start with the highs, the highs just remain the absolute, the my favorite part of the Sierra line, the Sierra 2 EXs particularly. This raw tweeter allows this speaker to punch way above into the big boy price brackets. I have heard $3,500 speakers, multiple $3,500 speakers, that are not as extended, that are not as airy, that are not as smooth as these raw tweeters. This is a great tweeter and it works really well in this package. Dave did a great job with the crossover. And the other way to say that is that many lesser designs, many lesser textile dome tweeters or aluminum tweeters when pushed, they break up or they get what I would call cringeworthy or you get the body wince when something happens and it doesn't sound right. With these kinds of tweeters, you can be playing Buddy Rich, you can be playing Neil Pert, and they can be getting exuberant on their drum kit, hitting the ride cymbals, smacking down on those crash cymbals. The decay the extension, the detail, and the shimmer, it's all there and there's no compression. These are wonderful speakers to listen to at louder levels and you just don't get, in my book, that cringeworthiness when the, the tweeter is getting out way outside its comfort zone and somebody's hitting the, the crash symbols too hard, it usually smears or messes, it, it, you know, it calls too much attention to itself and it, it kind of messes up the music that you're listening to. So for me, the highs remain just, I love it. These speakers do the highs really well. The mids. A lot of the audiophiles are guilty of bringing out their favorite female vocalist. I definitely am guilty of that going on and on about particular female vocalists. That is going to be what I will judge these speakers by. I'm not going to bore you guys with the usual Diana Krall stuff. That's for other audiophiles. To really work these guys out and really understand just how special they are, I got, I got nitty gritty with the, the male vocalists. And in particular, one I, I want to address is Chris Style from when he was with Nickel Creek. You listen to The Lighthouse's Tale, and you listen to him and how he, he, mel he he's so melodic and with his mandolin, and his voice has a particular smoothness in the upper registers. I've watched Nickel Creek live, and it's one of my favorite bands to watch live. I'm not going to say it's the same reproduction, but I'm just telling you the mid band and how it can reproduce Chris's vocals, it's, it's pretty spot on. And again, it's really enjoyable to just sit there and go through a lot of my favorite uh, male vocalist. It does really well. There's none of that nasally, nasally congestion that can come through with a, a lot of male, a lot of male vocalists. You know, uh, not making fun of him. It's just a, not to make not to make fun of his his vocal signature, but one in particular that does actually have a a nasally nasally tone to him is Gary Lavox from Rascal Flatts. So when you're listening to a lot of a lot of the Rascal Flats albums and you're listening to Gary Go, you're you are looking specifically for that tone from him because that is his sound signature. And again, these speakers pull that off where it's it's not annoying or it doesn't have the bloom. It's not something that that calls out to itself that these these vocals are off or Gary doesn't sound right. Not at all done really well 
very good in the mid band and another male vocalist that can really work a speaker out and I'm talking about Geoff Tate. Geoff Tate, the absolute opera rock god of the late 80s and the early 90s of Queensryche. Yes, Queensryche. We're talking about Operation Mindcrime. And when you listen to Eyes of the Stranger, that guy wailing and he goes up and he goes up, then he comes down, then he goes up again. Joff is a just a male vocalist mastermind in of himself and these speakers can play Joff really well another singer that I've watched live and truly there's nothing missing and there's nothing added that would call attention to itself in a negative way so the mid band with these speakers with male vocalist very good highly rated where these depart from the twos, the Sierra twos, the middle, the middle brother, the bottom end. Now, I love the highs so much, but I have to give what, what Dave Fabricant achieved with these speakers its due as well. These are highly impressive speakers now at the bottom end, and I have to over communicate that saying these can play into the mid 30 hertz range is not to say that these are big speakers these play like big speakers no folks let me be a hundred percent clear these are not big plain speakers you're not going to sit there and go oh my gosh these totally will replace my floor standing speakers there are inherent limitations to what the size of the driver can pull off. And a very clear example of that is last week's review of the Tannoy T225s. Now the Tannoy T225s or my Zoo Dirty Weekends, those have 10 inch drivers. A 10 inch driver is going to move a whole lot more air than a six inch driver. And as a matter of fact, during a lot of the tone tests with the Tenoy, there were dishes shaking themselves loose in the cabinets behind my listening, my listening position. And that's the attribute, you know, that's what you attribute to those larger drivers pressurizing the room. Sound pressure levels. Big drivers move lots of air and that's what is exciting about live music is you're getting hit in the chest with that that's not what these these drivers are going to accomplish for you so you know let's get that out of the way what these drivers do on from an amazing perspective is they will flesh out those mid 30 hertz tones and they can play in fully form what the bass note sounds like and so where other speakers with really large drivers sometimes there's too much mass and they can sound a little bit slow or a little bit vague yes they're moving a lot of air and there's energy there but that doesn't mean that the bass notes well defined these sons of guns will absolutely draw you a 3d diagram of what the bass note sound is like now that is truly impressive and the two songs that highlighted that for me was damian rice nine crimes in that it starts with the female vocals but there is a a kick drum off in the back and it is just it's nice and deep in the sound stage and there is this decay. It just goes on and it rolls off almost like thunder. And it's not that it shakes the room. It's just you get to hear the decay and you get to hear it as it rolls off and ex exits out behind you. It's, it's something very unique and it's special in of itself. And that's what makes listening to speakers like this at these price points so phenomenal. And also I would mention Hans Zimmer from the movie score Inception. And it was the, it was the track Time. 
again, Hans Zimmer, I mean, that that man, he makes all kinds of wonderful movie scores, but sometimes there's just some that have such contextual layers to them. The soundstage is so vast. There's so much going on. But again, kind of like a Danny Elfman, he really likes to bring in those low registers, those low notes, and they just hang out there. These speakers can play those and they give it definition and they give it that context. You can hear the vibrato. You can really hear the detail of you know the inner workings of those songs. And that's what makes these drivers from Sia so special. And it's amazing that you have a speaker of this size at basically a $1,750 price point with a few hundred dollars in drivers in the cabinet. Again, I reviewed... I've reviewed plenty of speakers in the $5,000 to $3,000 range that don't accomplish what these speakers accomplish. The, the overall package, the overall balance of what you're getting absolutely outplays tower speakers in the same price range. Now, that's not to say that I want to be careful because I'm going to start getting so many notes from you. Well, would you take them over your zoo dirty weekends? I've already had several questions from, from you folks. Or the Tecton lures being that you can buy Tecton lures around $1,100 still. They play differently and they have their other strengths. Certainly, they're not those other speakers that I just mentioned, the Zoo and the Lures. That's where, okay, you've got sound pressure levels coming back into play. Do you want that live music feel? Do you want to get thumped in the chest when you start listening at 90 dB playback? I'm going to certainly make some enemies in the, in the audio world. And you know, to the hell with it. I, I pick on these speakers all the time because it just was, they were such a letdown for me, at, at least at, at what I paid for them. And, you know, the, I had such high hopes or high expectations of the Alta Audio IOs. As a secondhand speaker delivered to my door, I paid $1,835 for those Alta IOs. Now, delivered to my door, I paid $1,650 for these brand new. These play lower. The bass is more defined at the lower registers with the Sierra 2EX versus the Alta IOs with its transmission line design and its seven inch Dayton woofer. Bigger speaker, heavier speaker, heavierly constructed cabinet, transmission line design, and yet this speaker has better defined bass than that $3,500 speaker. Both of them have ribbon tweeters and I would say that at any given time, both of them, I, I couldn't take one or the other, other if I had to judge them based on just the highs alone. I would say they were equal, absolutely equal on par. When you get into the mids, there's something else that the Alta IOs did that called too much attention to itself. And because of that transmission line design and trying to do too much with that seven inch woofer, it was it had a bloom character characteristic where certain genres that I played it would beam at me and really call attention to itself and the bass would be overwhelming for what it's doing and it could do a lot of sound it could do some pretty good impressive sound pressure pressure levels and it moved a lot of air but it just it wasn't as natural sounding as these or maybe it's not natural just defined these speakers at their price point 
have incredible definition. And at the end of the day, it's do you choose to partner, partner a subwoofer if you want those last registers with these, or do you go with tower speakers? Okay, at the end of the day, if you add the expense of a subwoofer and you have to integrate the subwoofer into your room, you know, why do that? Maybe you just go up to the Sierra Towers at that point. That would be my recommendation because of what these speakers are able to pull off. Closing this out, the Zoo Dirty Weekends, they stay. They're my reference floor standing speaker. The Sierra 2EX, they stay. They are my reference stand mount monitor speaker. There's going to be several more stand mount monitor speakers that are going to be coming through my room over the next three months. And next week, I will be covering off on this name 5SI integrated amp, comparing it more for you against my, my, uh, my Unison Research Unico P and the Peachtree Sky 125. And at some point on back order, I will, that Nova 150 is supposed to show up. So I've got lots of stuff to share with you guys. I'm booked out for several weeks on all the different products that are going to be coming through here. And I haven't fully unveiled what this sucker is yet, and I'm not talking about it. So you can ask all you want. I ain't saying anything just yet. I really do appreciate you all tuning in, and thank you for watching.